Hi there, my name is Robin Evans and I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Statistics here at Oxford University and I'm also a Tutorial Fellow at Jesus College, which means, uh, amongst other things, I may interview you if you apply to study maths or maths and statistics or maths and philosophy or maths and computer science at Jesus College. And I'm Will, um, I'm now third year mathematician at Jesus College and I'm going to be um, interviewed by Robin. We're going to start off by getting straight into the interview and the interviews this year, this 2021, um, will be done with Miro. That may continue in the future, we don't really know, um, but uh, the questions that I, I give Will are typical of standard interview questions. Mm -hmm. So um, in that sense, there's no particular difference between being here in person and doing it online. Okay, so if you haven't used Myra before, I recommend that you download the app well in advance of the interviews and, and get used to using it um, because then you'll be a bit more practiced when you actually have to do the real thing. So you can see here, I've, I've laid it out so that um, I could print out the notes on A4 pages because I put these frames in um, that are supposed to be A4 size. So Will, if you could write within the, the frames, I would very much appreciate it. And try and sort of zoom in so that you're not writing massive um, text on the on the page as well please okay so uh welcome will uh, we'll just say that we don't really do much to the small talk at the beginning of the um interview just a few words to sort of settle you down and then we get straight into the mathematics generally speaking so will i'd like you to um draw for me a, a tournament with four uh, contestants who will be knocked out. So think of it like you have two semifinals yeah. between two contestants, and then the, the winners of those two matches would meet in the final. And you want to, to sort of draw it on a bracket, which I'll just draw now, that looks a bit like this. So here's an example of what a tournament might look like with four players. So how many ways are there? How many, how many different tournaments could I construct in this manner? Um, okay, so I guess maybe we could think about it like this. Um, if we, we draw the kind of tournament tree um, mm -hmm. and I put A there, um, there are kind of three different choices of who A can play against. So A could either play against B or C or D. Um, so for example, if A played yeah. against C, um, just put the pen. If A plays against C, then we know B has to play against D. Um, so once you've chosen who A plays against, then you know who's going to play um, kind of on the other side of the tournament tree. So there are three choices for who A can play against. So I think three. Good, yeah, that's exactly right. So, um, so another way of thinking about it is it doesn't really matter where you put A, you can always kind of swap things around so that A moves to the top left. Um, so you can fix A's position as being the top left. And then you just have to choose A's opponent so that you get the same, um, so that you get a particular semi-final and then the other semi-final is now determined. So there's nothing left to choose. Good. How would this generalize if I had um, a tournament that looked more like uh, this? So I'm gonna draw now a sort of tournament with a by. So let's say A and B are seeded. So they just play each other in a, in a semi-final. And then the other contestants, they have to play a preliminary round in order to get through to a semi-final. So now, how many different ways could I construct a tournament in this format? Okay. So this one um, isn't quite as easy as just choosing who A plays against because for example here, A can play against B and we have this tournament or A can play against B and we have, I don't know, C versus E and then 
D versus F or something. So it doesn't, it's not enough to just, um, just do that. Yeah. Just erase those now. Um, so, so Will, please don't erase things that you've drawn. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, I'll put that you need to see the working on the on the board. Um, so so maybe we could. I still think it's helpful though. So maybe um, maybe we could think about it like this. On the let's just think about the left hand side of the tournament first. So I'll kind of draw a dotted line down here. Um, so how many pairs could be um, put straight through to the semi-final? Well, I think in this position, we could have, there are six different players that could go there, um, A, B, C, D, E, or F. Yeah. And then once you've chosen who is going to be in that spot, there are five players that they could play against. So if you choose A there, then they could play against B, C, D, E, or F. Um, Good. And then, um, so kind of, and then I also would notice on the other side of the grid, this looks very similar. Um, once you've done this, once you've chosen the two players who are going to play each other over here, then on the right-hand side, you've just got four more players who are basically playing in the same way as we did before with the with kind of this game above. Um, Very good, yeah. And we know that there are three different ways of doing that. Um, so something like uh, the six choices on the person who plays in the top left times by the five people that can play in the bottom left times by the three different ways that the um, four players on the right can play against each other, um, which is going to be uh, 90. Good. So is there any double counting you might have done here? Oh, uh, actually, yeah, okay, so... Oh, yeah. Um, so on the left hand side, I think actually, because, yeah, because I've counted that I've counted A versus B and B, B versus A. Um, Good, yeah. Which are actually the same match, I guess. So um, each match on the left, I've counted twice. So I think I could divide this all by two. So 45. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, Will. We'll just do a little analysis of Will's performance, which I assume was uh, somewhat deliberately uh, understated, given that he's now a third year, um, rather than a, an upper sixth former. Um, so, so what Will did, did with the first part was excellent, right? So he, he got very quickly that the key is who A plays in the first round and that there are three possible opponents. That was very nice. He was quick, um, everything you'd want. He didn't require any hints to get the answer to that part at all. Um, for the second question, um, he did the right thing. So he was, he was constantly um, telling us what he was thinking. So that's very important. You have to think out loud. Don't think in your head, because we don't know what you're thinking then. And it could be complete rubbish, and we won't know whether we should help you or not. Um, so make sure you say what you're thinking out loud. Um, and he, he sort of saw that what you have to do is to, to figure out, or, or he saw that one way of doing this is to figure out how many pairs of players can play on the left side of this draw. Um, so we had, uh, in my example tournament, we had A and B, but of course it could be any pair of players there. And he sort of tried to count the number of pairs and he just forgot that Obviously, A and B is the same as, as B and A, so you need to divide the six times five by two to get those actually 15 pairs amongst um, six players. And then he spotted straight away that the right-hand side is in fact exactly the same as the tournament he'd already constructed in the previous part. So, um, 
So that get, get, got him to multiply um, the number of tournaments we had by three. But then with the little hint I gave him, um, he very quickly, quickly got the, the fact there are only 45 rather than 90 different tournaments that you can construct on that grid. So well done, Will. I think you'd probably get a place with that interview. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just gonna go through a few um, interview tips um, that I think are very useful if you're preparing for an Oxbridge interview. Uh, so the first thing is make sure you practice answering maths questions out loud. So that can be um, with a teacher or a parent, or, or it can be with someone who doesn't really even understand the maths um, and whether the thing you're saying is correct. So the point is to get used to articulating things out loud and you'll sort of spot, oh, no, that, no, that's not quite right. I'm not explaining that very well. Um, so, so do this as much as you possibly can. Uh, another thing is um, we're not really interested in your personality. So you know, even if you're incredibly morose, don't worry about it. Um, we, we will attempt not to judge. We will do our best not to judge you on that. Um, the key is that you have to like doing maths. Right? So if you don't show any enthusiasm for doing maths, then that is a bit of a problem. Um, we're not trying to trick you. So, I mean, there are lots of stories around about um, Oxbridge interviews where uh, people are given cherries and they're told, and they're, and they're not told whether or not, and they're not told what they should do with the cherry stone afterwards. Um, we don't do anything like that. We're not trying to trick you. We just give you maths questions um, that we want to see if you can solve. Um, when you're asked a question, um, take a few seconds to think about it before you respond. So don't just blurt out the first thing that comes into your head. Um, like you can easily take five or even 10 seconds to think about what you've been asked. And if you're not sure, just ask us for clarification. That's fine. Um, so we'll try and do that in a way that doesn't give you a hint. Um, if you need a hint, though, do ask. Obviously, the more hints we have to give you, um, the less good it will look um, for your performance in the interview overall. But um, if, if, you need, if you need a hint and you're stuck, just say so and we'll give you one. Um, as I said, during the interview, make sure you reason out loud. So think about, um, so articulate what's going on in your head, basically. So you know, don't, don't sort of just stare at the page and, and think in your head, start saying out loud what it is you, that you're thinking. Um, another tip is to try practicing doing questions for familiar problems, but with strange notation. So you can often ask your teacher to set you um, questions where they, they change the notation to make it seem different to the kind of question that it actually is. And that's uh, something that you'll find that, that we do quite a bit because it sort of distinguishes people who just who really understand what's going on from people who just really re remember very well how to do problems in the textbook. Um, outside that, I'd say, first of all, on, on the morning of your interview, have a decent breakfast, right? There's, there's, you do not want to go to an interview hungry because you'll be miserable. Um, and, uh, and for any interview, you don't feel the need to dress up, right? You don't need to wear your school uniform or a suit, just dress normally, however you feel comfortable. And, uh, and that, that'll be, and that will be perfect for us, okay? As long as you're comfortable, um, it really does not matter how you're dressed. Did you have any last comment, Will? No, I, th I think kind of from the students side, it was a few, it's a few years since I've done a proper interview, but I think, yeah, all the things you said and just try as much as you can to relax and enjoy it because even if you don't get a place, it's an opportunity to talk with world experts about something that hopefully you really enjoy. So kind of coming in to the interview with a positive attitude um, is always helpful. I know that can be easier said than done, but um, try to bear that in mind, I think. And I'd say it's fine as well to, um, so to, yeah, try and remember your interview questions um, because some of them will be interesting. And you know, 
you might want to think about them in the future. Definitely. Okay, thank you very much, Robin. Thank you very much, Will. <laughs>